In this video, we'll show you how to create and edit objects using the form component. For this tutorial, we're going back to our old favorite, the application with book and author objects. And for this exercise, we'll add new books under an existing author. As you see, we already have a home page. Let's rename it to Add Book and choose a plus sign as a page icon. Let's also enable authentication so that only registered users have the option to add books. You also must log in using an existing user from the app user's structure. Now it's time to add the form component to the Add Book page. And for that, you'll need an API endpoint. So we configure a new API endpoint. It will act as an access gate for creating new objects in the books structure. Give it a name, add a description, and add a new layer, leaving only the ID field for reading, and the title, poster, author, and year of publication fields for writing. Save the endpoint and add it to the respective field in the component settings. Next, Add a header. You can hide it on the page using the Show Page Header setting. Now it's time to configure the fields. The first will be Title and then Author. Note that the Owner field should be hidden. It will be added automatically, as we'll save the ID of any user adding a book in the Owner field. The following fields are the poster, and year of publication. Mark, poster, author, and title as required fields. Save the component and check the form. Great! While it looks like you'll need to add the author ID manually when filling in the respective field, that's not very convenient. Let's make a drop-down list with options to make the procedure more user-friendly. To do that, you'll need to configure another API endpoint for the author's structure. This endpoint will provide a drop-down list to make a selection, and it should have one layer with the ID, first name, and last name fields for reading, as the first and last name fields are visible names for the author's structure. Now, enable the drop-down option for the Author field in the Component settings and select the endpoint you just created. Go back to the form and check it. Now you have a drop-down list provided by the API endpoint. Next, we look at quite an interesting function. We're going to set up a conditional section. This means that when a user selects a particular field in the form, the form itself will change and rebuild. To do this, you need to add two new fields to the book's structure. The first will be of the Boolean type, whether you recommend the book or not. Note that the Boolean type fields are configurable. By default, the options are called true or false, but we'll call them yes and no. The second field will be the recommendation, why you recommend the book. This field will be a string type, containing simple text. For these fields to appear on the form, you'll need to add them to the API endpoint. Add them for writing, save the changes, and open the component settings again. Now you have two new fields. Time to add a new section. This section will have just one field, the recommendation text. It can be displayed as a section. Let's call it the reasons why you should read this book. Now, enable the display as a section option. And remember, it should be conditional with the condition which is set in the is recommended field but this field must be available for reading to set the condition. Edit the API endpoint again. 
add the Is Recommended field for reading and configure the form again. Select the Recommend Book Equals True condition in the section. This makes sure that the section only appears in this specific case. Save the component and check. As you see, the conditional section only appears if you choose the Yes button in the Recommend Book section. Now we should test the whole form. Let's add a new book, Captain's Daughter by Alexander Pushkin. It was written in 1836. I recommend this book because it has a captivating story. Now, submit the book to the form. Success! Let's check the book structure to see if it has a new object. Yes, we see a new object. Captain's Daughter by Alexander Pushkin. All the links are filled in, including the link to the owner, and the user link has been filled in automatically. But wait, in the connected authors structure, you see that the book ID field, a backlink, is empty. We need to make a scenario to fix this. Our crash course has a detailed video about scenarios. We'll look at that more closely later. For now, let's make a simple scenario that reacts to all new objects in the books structure. It will consist of two steps, the start and edit object steps. We're going to edit a linked object field. That is, we select the author link and edit the book ID field. Because this is an array, you have to add an element to it. Check the documentation to see how to do that. You'll need the dollar sign D dot concat function to do this. You'll also need to enable JavaScript. This function has two parameters. The first is the array to which we want to add something the array of the linked authors object. The second is the element we want to add to the array, the ID of the element. That's it. Publish the scenario and run it. The scenario will process all new objects. If you want to run an existing object, just send it through the debug menu. You can look at this object and its fields in the logs, including the associated fields. Now, the Alexander Pushkin object has a link to the Captain's Daughter book in the Book ID field. Now let's find out how to make the drop-down list contain only specific objects, for example, that are somehow related to the users. To do that, add the Users Favorite field for example, that will be the authors a user may have added to the favorites. This field will be an array link to the app users structure. Add the ID of the user you use in the app to this field. Save the changes. Then go to the API endpoint that provides objects for the drop down menu. Get Authors. Add the filter that the User's Favorite field must contain the ID of the user. We choose the operator Array Contains Any and we type the value ID inside two curly brackets. This will add the ID of the user. Now test it. Great! It works! This is the object that has the user ID in the User's Favorite field. Now let's see how to edit objects using the form. Turn on the Display and Edit Existing Object option. In the tooltip, you see that the ID field, at least the ID field, should be available for reading and writing. Next, edit the API endpoint again. Make the ID available for writing. This is a prerequisite for editing existing objects. Now, add the fields that you want to be able to edit for reading. Save the changes. 
Check the component settings and choose the option to have the object ID as a parameter in the URL. Let's see how it works. First, copy the ID of the object we want to edit from the Books structure. Add the parameter at edit object equals the object ID. And now you can edit it. The only thing is, the author field is blank because the API endpoint that's tied to this dropdown isn't providing the correct author. Next, let's try another newly created object. You can see that all fields are filled in except for the last one, the recommendation. Maybe we didn't add it for reading in the API endpoint. Let's check. That's right, we didn't. So now we add it, save it, and reload the page. And there, now you can edit the object. There are two other options for passing the ID of an object you want to edit to the form. The first is to confirm that the object ID is equal to the user ID. This is usually used for profile pages. The second option is to pass it with the URL, like a nested page of some kind. Add the URL parameters in the form settings, save them, and add the object ID with a slash after the page name. In the form component settings, among other things, you can configure what to do after successfully submitting an object. You can leave or remove the possibility of submitting the form again, do it automatically after a few seconds, or just by pressing a button. An automatic redirect means you'll go back to the form after saving. Next, you can set up a message for users after a successful submission. The book has been added, for example. This message may have a header and a body. You can use HTML tags in the body. Let's add another book. Ruslan and Lyudmila by Alexander Pushkin. Add the poster and year of publication, 1820. Again, I recommend this book because it is deep and offers a lot to ponder over. You see that there is no button after submitting, but after three seconds, there was a redirect.